sunshiny day and just so grateful to have this opportunity to be with you all and to um, share in the witness that, that Christ has given us in terms of him being amazing and great and awesome and him just touching the lives of those who have been called. There's, there's so many things that are happening, you know, still, you know, in, in our society and what I want us to do is, is to continue to focus on what Christ is doing in the midst of our society. How Christ is touching people's lives in the midst of all the chaos. How, how we see Christ straightening things out and smoothing things over. And I don't want to give anybody credit except for Jesus. Amen? Because he's the one who made it possible for all these things to happen. And I'm just, just so grateful to be a part so many positive changes that are taking place, you know, throughout the city of New Britain and in our state and right across the country. Amen? So, so let us go right to prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this day that you've given us, so grateful for another opportunity to stand before you as witnesses to all the things that you are doing in the lives of those who you called. You are strengthening us. You are picking us up. You are keeping us. And I, you know, I look at our congregation, Father God, we have not lost one person. Through all this COVID nonsense, we haven't lost not one body, not one life. And we're grateful for that, Father God. We're not bragging. We're, we're just stating the truth, Father God, of how wonderful you are, how amazing you are, and how we are recognizing, Father God, how it's you that has us. Hallelujah. And we just pray, Father God, that you would continue to bless those families who have lost loved ones. Continue, Father God, to watch over and keep and uplift those, Father God, who are in bereavement. And for those, Father God, who have someone who is sick in the hospital, a loved one who is going through some type of pain and difficulty. And you know, I just received news yesterday, Father God, that one of my former students has passed away. David Dudley, he was an awesome young man, and he leaves, you know, a family of a, a, a wife and four girls, they're grown women now, and we're just praying for that family, Father God. Just bless, Father God, him and his, his mom, who I had a chance to speak with on yesterday, bless them, Father God. And we just pray, Father God, that you would allow your Holy Spirit to touch the hearts, the minds, and the souls of those who are going through. For you have made it possible, Father God, through your Holy Spirit that dwells richly within us for us to be able to stand up for you in these last days. That, Father God, we're grateful. You have given us a reason, Father God, for hope, even for those, Father God, who leave here because you said absence from here is presence with you in, in heaven. And we're grateful for that, Father God. But first and foremost, if people want to be with you in heaven, they have to have a relationship with you down here. And that's why we're coming today, Father God, to preach the gospel message so that people will have an opportunity to be saved. We thank you, Father God, in advance for that. And we ask, Father God, your blessing to be on all who are joining us this morning. If there's one person, Father God, or many people who are on this call line or on Facebook live stream this morning, Father God, who do not know you, 
We're praying that after today's message, Father God, that they will accept you into their lives and live a lifestyle from this day forward that's pleasing to the great I am. We thank you, Father God. We praise you. We magnify you. And we lift you up. And we glorify you, Father God. And we lift you up. And we say lift you up, Father God, because you said in your word, if I be lifted up above the earth, I will draw all men unto me. And so we lift you up, Father God. And we lift you up. And we glorify your holy and righteous name before man. Thank you, Father God, for every blessing. We ask these things, dear Lord, in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I'm going to ask um, Reverend Barbara if she would come at this time and help us go into our worship portion of this morning's experience. Come on, baby. Amen. Hallelujah. You want me to move that? No, it's fine. Morning. Um, I'm just going to sing an old song uh, so you can all join in with me in singing this song um, because of who you are. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who Because of who you are, I will lift my voice to say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will live my voice and say, Lord, I worship you. Because of who you are. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. You're Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. Woo. My provider. Jehovah Lord, you reign in victory, Jehovah Shalom. My Prince of Peace, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Your Jehovah You're my provider, Jehovah Nisi. Lord, you reign in victory, Jehovah Shalom. My Prince of Peace, Lord, I worship you. Because of who you are, Lord, I worship you. Because of who you are, 
Turn your Bibles to Psalms 133, verse 1. And it reads as follows. Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Hallelujah. Behold, how good and pleasant it is. For brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. 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 This morning, we're going to speak from this vantage point. United we stay. Amen. United we stay. Hallelujah. Over the past couple of weeks, I've listened in a few messages that speak about the paralyzing of Listen to this definition of fear. Fear is a feeling induced perceived danger or threat that occurs in certain types of organisms which causes a change in metabolic and organ functions and ultimately a change in behavior. Change in behavior such as fleeing, running, hiding, or freezing from perceived traumatic offense. Get that word perceived? That means it, it, it may not have happened. You think it's going to happen. Lord have mercy. Fear in human beings may occur in response to a certain stimulus occurring in the present or in anticipation or expectation of a future threat perceived as a risk to oneself. Once again, you have, it hasn't even happened. But just because you think it's going to happen, and that's what I told this morning, talking about the mental state that fear brings us to. The fear arises from the perception of danger, leading to confrontation with or escape from or avoiding the threat, which in cases of fear can be a freeze response or paralysis. Lord have mercy. 
So why is it that we have made speaking about fear important? It's simple. Fear must be demystified and uprooted so that we do not operate our lives as Christian men and women locked down and shackled when Christ has suffered and died to set us free. You see, we are free, but it's possible that we allow fear to once again shackle us and hold us back from being who Christ has called us to be. And a good example of the debilitating effects of fear is what we see. Get that word? What we see in the story about Goliath. Sometimes we uh, allow what we see with the physical eye to cause us to fear and paralyze us in the, in the physical realm. And it's so important for us to see that this giant-sized man caused so much fear in the Israelite army that they trembled in fear when they heard his voice. You see, they didn't even have to see him. They just heard his voice and they trembled. And they were so afraid that their feet operated as though they were wearing blocks of cement for shoes. Fear caused that. Their hearts were so heavy, heavy that it felt like someone put a constricting ball and chain around their hearts that was so tight they could not breathe. Fear caused them to forget that their God is a giant. Somebody needs to say amen. And I want you to say amen because sometimes, you know, we fear caused them to forget that their God is a giant. And their God, Israel like God, their God, I'm talking about our God, was the one who gave them past victories. Their God was the one who enabled them to come up from where they were to where God had placed them in the promised land. You see, they were slaves back in Egypt, but God brought them through. And I want you to understand today that it was God that did this. It was not own intellect. It was not their own minds, nor was it their military strategies that allowed them to have the victories that they had. You see, it's important to recognize it had nothing with the superior design of their weapons and their armor. It was God that gave them the victory. And it was God that brought them this far. And yet, I want to share with you this morning that it took a little boy named David who used, of all things, a slingshot and a smooth stone. But the greatest weapon that David had was he... He had a heart that was felt and built on his trust in God's ability to give him victory. And he used that to demonstrate that when it comes to matters of life, we who have been called must also trust God. Somebody needs to say amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You see, this is the reason the psalmist wrote, Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. He wrote this knowing that there would be times in our lives when we would be challenged to face our fears and a test of whether we would operate our lives based on fear or put our trust in the same God who has brought us this far by faith. Somebody needs to say amen. You see, the same God who has given us wisdom to walk in a way that's pleasing to him, who is able to 
somebody. You need to ask yourself this morning. Is God able to keep us or not? You need to ask yourself this morning. Can God bring us through or not? And I want you to know that united we stand. Hallelujah. And when I say united we stand, I'm not talking about standing, you know, on, on this floor. Nor am I talking about standing on these on the ground outside. I'm talking about us standing on the very promises of God, standing on the very foundation that Jesus Christ has laid. United, hallelujah, we stand. Hallelujah. The idea behind unity that is being spoken about in the word is this. Our common faith and the fact that we stand together, united around repeated demonstration of God's divine display of power and favor for us, what it does, it strengthens us. It's us knitted together. Amen. Standing together with Christ, God's only begotten Son, unites us and bonds us with an adhesive that is stronger and more powerful than any force known to mankind. You see, our standing together connects us on a spiritual level that joins one heart to another heart and blends our thoughts as a united message of strength and hope in Jesus Christ our Lord. The enemy has challenged us and challenged us and challenged our beliefs over and over and over many times. Yet, we're still here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Not only are we still here, we're still strong. Yes. And I would like to remind us this morning, it is not because we're smarter. And it's not because we're better looking, even though we may be. Nor is it because we have more money than anybody else. Only because we have a common ally, and his name is Jesus the Christ, the Son of the Living God. Somebody needs to say amen. United we stand. United we stand on the very foundation that Jesus Christ has laid. Hallelujah. Amen. My, my, my. My God is an awesome God. He's an amazing God. He does great and amazing things in ordinary people each and every day. Ordinary folk just like you and I. Hallelujah. I know that in a couple of weeks we will be to the building where we worship God together. And we have taken every precaution known to man. We will wear masks we will use the digital thermal thermometers to take temperatures at the door before we enter the building. We'll take temperatures before folks get on the van. And I want you to know that our praise team will wear shields when they're singing. I want you to know that I will be wearing a shield when I preach. We will sanitize the entire building and maintain social distancing. But I remind you once again, and, I'm, and this is the reason I'm bringing this up, I remind you once again, more than anything else, we will come knowing that without any doubt, our God is leading us and directing our footsteps. It's God that will keep us. It's God that will keep us. Amen. It's God that will enable us. It's God that will give us the victory. United we stand. Hallelujah, somebody. It's so important for us to note what God is able to do over and above that which man can do. Amen. 
Hallelujah. 1 Peter 5, 8 says this. The devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. And with that being said, I want you to know, I enjoy watching nature shows on TV. And one particular show I was watching showed how lions hunt out in the wild. You see, the female lions do most of the work. But I want you to know that the male lion's part is important. Amen. The male lion roars to get the herd running. And while the females are waiting ahead to pick off, to separate themselves from the group and make themselves easy prey. Mm. And when the females take down the prey, the males walk in and get the, if I can say this pun, the lion's share of the meal. And we have to be careful to know how the enemy is operating in these dark days. Mm -hmm. He is using distraction and confusion and mixed messages to, to create fear in us. Mm -hmm. And the more we watch these news stories, the greater are our chances of running away like that stray antelope. Running away like that stray zebra and running away from the congregation and being caught up and devoured by the enemy. You see, there's a good chance that if we focus more on what we're listening to and what we're hearing in the, in the bad news, if we listen to that more than we're listening to the word of God, then I'm telling you right now, we're going to stray away. It is so obvious how the devil is using this manipulative uh, power to distract us and to get us to, to run from the word. Mm -hmm. Thinking that, you know, it's more important for me to go outside and wash my car than to hear the message of God. Mm -hmm. Thinking that it's more important for us to go to the beach than for me to hear the word of God. And I want you to know there's plenty of time to go to the beach. But there's only one time when we can hear the word of God. And we need to be steadfast and immovable in the things that God is calling us to so that we understand that we must stick together and give God the glory Amen. so that we stand united in victory. Reading and studying the word of God is critical to us having the ability to stand in the end. Because if you don't know what you're saying, then you'll fall for anything. It's so important that we must spend time with the Savior who we trust and believe. You see, spending time with, with Jesus means that you're establishing a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. Spending time with Jesus means that the Holy Spirit on the inside yes. is getting stronger yes. than what's on the outside. Yes. So that we can overcome those things that are thrown at us by the adversary. Hallelujah. And I want you to know that spending time with God is important. God has given us the plan to re-enter the sanctuary safely. But for this to work, all of us must be willing to follow the protocols that we have put in place. Amen. You see, if you've been out of state, Walking up into the sanctuary, quarantine yourself so that you know and we know that everybody that you come in contact with will be safe. If you feel sick, if you have a cough, if you're sneezing, stay home. Stay home until you've been given the green light by your physician so that you don't infect nobody else. See, we'll be there when you're feeling better. You've got to know that these things are in place for a reason, so that all of us are safe. And I hesitate to say this, but I believe it's necessary. I don't usually pay attention and look at who's giving what in the giving statement. 
I leave that to Brother Sam. I leave that to Deacon Hooker. And I leave that to Reverend Barger who handled that. I do look at the, the total, but I don't usually look at who's given what. But COVID has given me time to do just that. And I'll be honest with you. I'm concerned. And my concern leads me to believe that some folk don't understand the, the severity and the, and the position you put yourselves in when you don't do what God says. Everybody wants the blessings of God, but are you doing what God is asking so that you can receive that blessing? I do not understand Man. why everyone is not uh, making a contribution. I don't understand that. But it's necessary, y'all. It's so important for us to understand that we must be consistent in paying our tithes and giving an offering. It's what the Word is asking us to do. Hallelujah. It's a means by which the doors of the house of God can remain open. Amen. And keep in mind, at, in the back of your mind, maybe you can put it to the front, but one day, our goal is to own our own building. We can get there sooner than later when all of us are willing to do our part. United we stand. That means all of us putting in together. Not just a couple people, a handful. It's so important for us all to get on board with the, the, the giving ministry so that we can get to the place where God would have us to be. United we stand. Hallelujah. I'm going to move on. Amen. One day, the Pharisees heard that Jesus cast out the devil in a man that was possessed. And the man was both dumb and blind. Couldn't speak and couldn't see. The Pharisees said, as they were whispering in one corner, Jesus was casting out demons by the prince of devils. Jesus, knowing what they said on the other side of the room, responded by telling them that no kingdom divided against itself is capable of surviving. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And this is the reason the Lord has shared this message with us this morning. To remind us, behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. You see, when we stick together, we operate in blessings that only Christ can provide. We are strengthened by the Holy Spirit in you, encouraging the Holy Spirit in me. And the Holy Spirit in me, encouraging the Holy Spirit in someone else. As we stand together and recognize it is only because of Christ that we've made it this far by faith. Hallelujah. No house divided against itself can stand. Therefore, let us be diligent. Therefore, let us be steadfast in supporting each other. Let us be steadfast in supporting the house. It is our testimony. Hallelujah. Both spoken and seen, it is our testimony that we, in which we describe the truth of what God has accomplished on our behalf through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our King. Somebody needs to say amen. You see, united we stand when we look up and know 
morning is so important. And Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, is the one who leads and guides us. But we've got to allow the Holy Spirit to operate in a way that he wants. Stop quenching the Spirit. Shout when the Lord tells you to shout. Don't hold back. Let it go. Hallelujah. You see, we're challenged in our faith sometimes. Sometimes we're challenged in the things that we're called to do. But we've got to walk in a way that's it's not about what I want. I've got to walk where Christ sends me, where he tells me to go. Hallelujah. And we, being together, strengthen one another. Every time that we're discouraged, every time that we hear bad news, every time that we're cast down in our countenance, we must recognize who it is that enables us to get back up again. It's just like when we were little kids and we fell off that bike. We didn't stay on the ground. We got back up. And I want you to know that the one who helps us to get back up again is not self. Amen. It's Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus is the reason that, you know, if you have any strength, that's the reason you're strong. It's not because of you. Amen. It's so important that we have a united body of men and women who are standing together strong. Standing together Standing together anchored in the truth of God's holy word. Amen. Standing together tough through the thick and through the thin. We're reminded. Hallelujah. United we stand. Amen. United we stand. We're united as we stand so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through, through your faith. We're united together so that we might know and understand that you, having been deeply rooted and securely grounded in love, are fully capable of comprehending with all the saints, comprehending and knowing with all the people of God, the width and length and height and depth of the God's love. Amen. Fully experiencing that amazing and endless love. I'm talking about the love of God, y'all. I'm talking about the agape love of yeah. God. I'm talking about the unconditional love of God. That love of God that runs from heart to heart and breast to breast. Amen. I'm telling you right now, I know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the love of Christ which far surpasses mere knowledge. Mm. That you may be filled up through your being with all the fullness of God. So that you may have the richest experience of God's presence in your life. And when you have this rich experience of Christ in your life, what he does, he comes and he completely fills you. Yeah. He, keep, he completely floods you with God himself. Yeah. And I'm telling you right now, you get that I can't help it when yeah. God fills you. Yeah. You get that I can't help it when God floods you. Yeah. And you begin to shout and scream because you can't help it. Hallelujah. And it don't matter who's looking. It don't matter who's watching. Amen. You better come get some of what I got. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. So we, as children of God, stand strong, men and women, because we're of God. Stand together in these last and evil days. Oh, I know I heard the Bible when it said, Resist the devil and he will flee. Mm -hmm. Re resist them. You see, there's a part that we have in this. There's some things that you and I must do. And I want you to know that the things that God has called us to do will be much easier when we stand together. United we stand, children of God. Yeah. United we stand. Hallelujah. My God is an awesome God. Yes, he is. I want you to know that God is able to do it all. He's able to bring us through. He's able to pick us up when we're down. He's able. Hallelujah. United we stand. Somebody say amen. Amen.
Amen. Hallelujah. My God is an awesome God. My God is an amazing God. Yes, he is. And I'm so grateful. You set me up here sweating. Lord have mercy. I'm going to have to turn the AC on. <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy. God is so good. He's so amazing. And he continues to do amazing things in ordinary people just like you and I each and every day. And I'm grateful for that. And I don't want to uh, mislead anybody in any kind of way. But I just know that when we stand together, we, we become an immovable force. And it's not because of us, it's because of who's in us. And we can do great things together. Amen. My God is an awesome God. Right now, we're open up the doors of the church. And by that, I mean this is the opportunity that you have, whether you're at home or whether you're driving in your car, doesn't matter where you are, you have an opportunity right now to accept Christ into your life. All you've got to do is pray and say, Lord, I'm a sinner, and I have done wrong, and I want to admit that right now before your face. And I just ask, oh, Heavenly Father, that you would come into my life right now. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. I believe that he arose on the third day and that right now he is seated at the right hand of God and one day he's going to come back for us. Pray that prayer and Jesus Christ will come right into your life. He will flood your heart. He will allow the Holy Spirit to allow you to speak to him. Hallelujah. All you got to do is put your trust and faith in him. Amen, somebody. My Amen. God is so good. He's so great. He's so amazing. He's so awesome. Let us continue to walk in a way that's pleasing to our God. Amen. Um, I just want you to keep in mind, um, I know next Saturday is July 4th. It's, it's uh, a holiday. So I, I may talk to Brother Sam, and I'll get this message out to you if we, if we change the, the pickup date for the offering. We may change it to Friday evening when people get off of work. Um, just to, so people, we don't interrupt people's uh, holiday. And we'll also pick up our communion cups at that time as well. But I'll, I'll let you know after talking to Brother Sam what we're going to do in regards to that, okay? So that, you know, we, we don't interrupt, you know, the, the flow of, of what we're trying to accomplish. And, um, you know, we'll continue to press towards the mark of our high calling. Because that's what Christ has given us to do. Amen. We are blessed and not stressed. And I'm telling you right now, we're walking in the divine favor of Jesus Christ because Christ has anointed us for this very moment in time so that we would be able to stand in these very last days and demonstrate to the world what Christ has given us to do. Amen? Our God is amazing, and I'm so grateful to be able to be used in this capacity. And I'm just prayerful that you and I would continue to be witnesses for him in these last days. If there's nothing else that needs to come before us at this time, we're going we're gonna to close out in prayer. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for this opportunity that you've given us. We just pray, dear Lord, over the offering that was, that was raised on yesterday. And we just pray, Father God, supply it and allow it to be used, Father God, to uplift and upbuild your kingdom here on earth. Amen. We're so grateful for that, Father God. We ask that in Christ Jesus' name. And now unto him who's able to keep us and to uh, exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. And all of God's people said, amen. Amen. You all have a blessed afternoon. I love you. You know, stay filled with the Holy Spirit. Stay on your knees. Amen. And we'll continue to march on in the name of Jesus and be the light that he's called us to be in this dark world. Amen, somebody. You all have a blessed afternoon. I love you. Through Jesus Christ, who is both our Lord and Savior, I am Reverend Jervay Barger, pastor of Peace Missionary Ministries here at 90 Main Street, New Britain, Connecticut. We are a multicultural church with a heart to serve all races. As you can tell, we love to worship, teach, and preach the Word of God. If you 
ever want to join us, our address is on the screen. Or call for a ride at 860-681-7251. God bless you, and we hope to see you real soon.